Let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 2 verse 2. Matthew 2.2 2. And after Matthew 2.2 2, we read Matthew 9.10 Matthew 4, I'm sorry Verse 9 to 10 Matthew 2 Arbale Matthew chapter 2 And we say, we read verse 2 To understand, let us start from 1 Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Then verse 2, where I'm saying, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. And again, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 4. And we read verse 9 and 10. Someone Matthew 4. Revale 9 and 10. Can we read? 9. <clears throat> and he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you save. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful word, and relate and speak to us through it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have titled the message of what we are going to speak about today. And the heading is, Whom are you worshipping? Whom are you worshipping? Oh, worship. Let me say so. Because I'm going to say, Whom are you Worship. Or let us say, Praise and worship. But I'm going to dwell too much in worship. Where we have just read, we are hearing about the wise men of the East when they were coming to search for the king, the king who was born. And there where we have read, the Bible says, so that we can worship him. So now when we look at the word of God clearly and closely, it shows us that those men didn't just travel to the east. They were traveling to the east because they were searching for a king. Now as they were searching for a king, they were doing so because they were wise men. In other words, in other words the Bible explained that and said, they said, we saw a star that a king was born. In other words, to us as children of God, it relates or tells us that there's somebody who needs to be worshipped. And the person who needs to be worshipped, children of God, is a king. Hallelujah. Can you tell a person that is close to you, you need to worship a king? There is nobody on this earth, in the water, in the sea, up there, or wherever, that needs to be worshipped if he or she is not a king. This man or this wise man took a road and went on searching for where the king was until they found the king that was born. And when they found that king, the Bible said they worshipped, they gave gifts and they worshipped. These men, these wise men, they were having a revelation of the king that was to be born. A king that was coming. A king that was on the road. Now when they finished worshipping, you will see that as you go on reading, I'm not going to dwell much on it. 
when they moved out of there, the Bible said, don't go back by the road that you took when you were coming here. Go by the other road because those ones that you have asked, if you go back, they will ask you where the king is because they want to kill the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when we have read in the second verse, it said, Jesus was speaking to the devil, Satan himself. And the devil was saying unto the same king that we are talking about, King, I know you have come to earth to take over everything that is here on earth. I know you've got supreme power over me. But because you are here on earth, you found me being the ruler of earth. You found me being the ruler of each and every person that is on earth. Now for me, that's the devil speaking, to give you the kingship that you were born for, you have to bow and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says, after the devil spoke with Jesus those words, remember, this man was born being a king. He does not need to buy the kingship. He does not need anybody to give him permission towards the kingship. But now, the person who was ruling here on earth, who knew vividly or clearly that this man that is born is going to take over the rulership of this earth. Now he went to that man and said to him, or to Jesus, and said to him, you know what? I am ready to give you everything here on earth. Because I am the one that, that is ruling right now. And the devil said to him, but for me to give you the rulership or the authority or the right to rule here on earth, first, little of us, you must bow. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said to him, imagine maybe if Jesus didn't knew his stand, if Jesus didn't knew what he was supposed to be, if Jesus didn't knew that he was here on earth to take over the authority of kingship, if Jesus was not sure that he was sent to come to earth so that he can be a king. Then Jesus answered and said to him, no, 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 no. We don't do it that way. There is only and one only person that we have to worship and bow to. And this person that we have to worship and bow to is the Father in heaven, God Almighty, the King of glory. Above him there is no other. Devil, I understand now earth is your territory. I understand that now you have taken over the whole world. But let me remind you something that is important. I will never bow to you for anything in this world. Why? Because I know there is only one and one God that needs to be worshipped. Now, after answering, telling the devil those words, the Bible says, Satana Mutuela went away, left him. Why? Because Jesus told the devil the precise answer. You know, many of us, Banababa, Christians, we are being robbed of the authority of Christianity. Why? Because we bow no makanja ni anywhere. If we are patron and gentleman, we are good. If you can feel you are hungry right now, you bow. If I can come to you right now, I said, if I lay my hand on you right now. You will find 70, 17 million inside your account. You bow. If I 
come to you right now, I said to you, if I lay my hand on you, when you leave this place, you'll find Pajero parking in your house. You bow. If I come to you now and say, if you can give me this, and I will double it and multiply it and top it and four times it or five times it or whatever it to you. When you leave this place, you will find your mkuku being a seven-bedroomed house. You bow. Even if you know that what you are being told does not exist. The only thing that we take into account is that we are being robbed of our authority of worshipping the Lord. We have been robbed of our authority of worshipping the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come. We are robbed of the authority that we have been given. That we must worship and worship no other but God in heaven who is alive. Hallelujah. Now Christians, we need to know how to worship. Can you tell the person that is close to you? You need to know how to worship. There it has been portrayed nicely. The devil spoke in a very good way. Say, if you can just bow. Not even put two of them, just one. Fasi, one, only one. I will give you everything. Everything that is here, I'm going to give it to you. But the only thing that you do for me, bow. Now, let me explain what I'm trying to say to you, children of God. Bowing. It's a sign of worship. The wise man from the east said, where is he so that we can go and worship and bow before him? Now the devil said to Jesus, Jesus, I will give you everything, but the issue here you must do what? Bow. Worship. And when you worship me, I am going to give you everything that you want. And Jesus said, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you save. Now, this is a question to us Christians. Whom are we worshiping? How do you worship? How do we do it when we come into the house of the Lord? Do we worship God in the real truth or in the way that we are supposed to worship him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 5, we hear about Abraham. Abraham was given a son. And when he was given a son, God asked for the son. And said to him, I want you to give me an offering. We read there as we go on, the Bible says, Abraham went with his servants and his son. But when they reached a certain place, Abraham said to his servants, Can you stay here? I will go with my boy forward there, just a little bit, so that we can go and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, Abraham was saying, for me to do the will of the Lord, it means I am worshipping. For me to do what God has told me to do, it means I am worshipping God. For me to do what the word is telling me, it means I am doing what? I am worshipping God. So how many of us today are worshipping God by doing what is written in his word? Or by what God is telling us? This thing has ran away from our minds and our spirits. That as Christians we have another duty that we have to do. And the duty that we have to do Banababa she we have to worship God, Noma Kanjani. 
Things are agreeing or they are not agreeing. We worship. Things are going right for us or they are not going right for us. We do what? We worship. Things are not well or they are well. We do what? We worship. Why do we do that? Why? Because we are doing what has been written in the word of God. In other words, this is what the word of the Lord is saying unto us or telling us. Children of God, when we give in the house of God, we are doing what? Huh? We are worshipping. Now, can you ask the person that is, how many times do you worship per week? Huh? How many times do you worship a week? We have been ordered as Christians. We have been ordered as Christians to worship God anytime, everywhere, but according to the word of God. If the word of God says we must jump and I have to do this every day, I will do it. Why? Because I am doing what? I am worshipping God. Hallelujah. Can you ask again the person that is close to you? Are you worshipping God? Ask again, are you worshipping God? Can you ask the person again, are you worshipping God? Okay, let me go forward. Then the Bible says, there in the book of Psalms, Psalm 95, verse 6, it says, Oh, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. Are you there? Oh, come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. And Psalm 99 verse 5 says, Exalt the Lord God and worship at his footstool. For he is holy. The Bible says to us today. Come let us worship. Come let us bow down. Come as we are Christians. Let us do that which is needed or what is assigned to us to do. That which has been assigned to do as children of God. Is to always worship the Lord. Is to always, always bow before Him. Now I will try to explain what bow means. Bowing means you can bow physically, yes. But bowing also means when you allow that word to shape you so that you can be able to do it. Can I say it again? To allow that word. When the Bible says to you, pray without ceasing. I'm talking to you. Now you allow pray without ceasing to mold and bend you and make you to be able to pray without ceasing. When you start to do what the word of the Lord is telling you, you are bowing to the Lord. Now, this is what happened to most of us many times. When we hear about bowing, we think about putting our knees on the floor. Whereas we don't allow the word of the Lord to bend us, to bow us. When the word of the Lord reaches you, Eric Mulalaka spade, Leo Ukoba, if you do it, you roll like a ten. Karu shone churu rapele. Au sato roll like a ten, uta roll like a twelve. Why you only two hours here? Oi chia udiang, urapela. 
You no longer sleep at 8 o'clock. You sleep at 10 o'clock. Why? Because the word of the Lord said unto you, you must pray without ceasing, for it is the will of God. Now, because you want to worship the Lord each and every day of your life, you say to yourself, Father, because you told me that I have to pray each and every day without ceasing, I am going to do it. It's raining or it's not raining. It's sunny or it's not sunny. I'm going to enable this word or allow this word to bend me so that I become, I be able to do what you are saying that which I must do hallelujah are you hearing me now most of us we Christians we are no longer bowing to God we are no longer doing what God wants us to do bowing when we say Eleven o'clock, we will be interceding. Sorry, some of us we come to o'clock when we know that Mamuru is coming. God is telling you today, you are not bowing, you are not his own. Those that are his own, they bow. It doesn't matter who said it, but the person said it. In the presence of Almighty God or in the house of the Lord that we should come and pray. We come and start praying. Why? Because we want to bow to what the Lord is saying. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. 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 Ask the person that is close to you, are you bowing? Then the Bible said the same person And when we bow again, we kneel before him. We do obeisance to him. We do his word, we bow. And we do it physically again, bowing. We show him, we respect him. When you bow before the king, when you worship the king, you show that you are respecting the king. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Now, what is worship? Worshipping is to give a reference or respect or bowing down to somebody who is of a higher authority to you. And now when you give respect or bow down before that person, you are showing that person or the person has got authority over you. You are of a lesser level or lesser authority than him. In other words, that person is of above or top authority above you. In other words, you can never bow to somebody who is of your own level. Can somebody say hallelujah? You can never bow again to somebody who is below you. Wherever or whenever you start to bow, it's because you are acknowledging that the person who is there is above you. Now when we come to God Almighty, we are Christian again. We are born again. We are going to heaven. This Jehovah that we are talking about that sent Jesus on earth has the authority that is above authorities. We are not even in his own level. We are not even close to him. We are not even equal to him. Because now we have agreed that we want to follow this God. We want to be his children. The only thing that can make our God to stay and be present where we are is when we are able to worship. Many of us and most of us, we are lacking the style of worship. Can you tell the person that is close to you a style of worship? When you worship God, because he has the whole authority, he does not ask any other authority from anybody else. This is what I've learned from the word of God, I'm going to tell you. When we worship God, God comes and stays with you. When you worship him, his presence 
will come to you. When you worship him, your situation must change. When you worship him, what is heavy for you must be taken away. When you worship him, when you worship this God, this God always comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, do you know how we can invite God to our presence? Worship. Worship. Can you tell somebody close to you, worship? When we go to church these days, there is this thing that we look at too much most of the time. Dance. Praise. I'm not saying praise is wrong. You understand me? Praise is good. Why? Because we are saying to the Lord, thank you. Father, thank you. Hey, I was sick, Father, you healed me. Oh my God, I didn't know where to go and now I know where I'm going. Oh, Father, I have fallen, now I'm standing. But, what I'm talking about today is worship. Worship. Worship is Ujia mudim wa mia ma chaneji udula ona. You put him in his rightful place. This is what you do when you worship. You've been praising and praising and praising, and you start selling yourself. It's like something is not changing. There is nothing that is happening to me. I have to do something that will bring a change to my life. This is what you have to do. I will tell you. You start praising. Before I go on, I'll give you an example. A very good one for that matter. Let us speak about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They were told to worship. Am I right? Now, their problem was... They know only one God, that which they are supposed to worship. And the God is well, Jehovah. They know that one. And now, a picture was laid somewhere. And they were told to bow. When you hear this and this and that and that and that and that, you must do what? Bow. Now when everything was heard, when they heard everything that they were supposed to hear, all of the people bowed and they never bowed. Do you know why? They knew that they are supposed to bow to only one person. When you worship this God, when they put you in the fire, because you know that one you have to worship, he must come down and rescue you from the fire. They took these guys, they put them inside the fire. Is there in the book of Daniel? Now, after putting them inside, this man, I love him. He said, I want to I want to see. Why? Because they denied to worship my own God. I want to see if this their God will be able to rescue them. And this is what happened. Now because they know the person they have to worship. My Bible said when I read it. It says when he went there to go and look. I hope to see what has happened with them. The Bible says he called others come and see. Didn't we put three men in the fire? They said yes. And he said this is what I'm seeing. Oh. Now these men they are four. They are no longer three. And this other one. Looks like the son of the gods. That's where we are failing children of God. Let me tell you. It's seeing a situation. It's going down and down. And worship. Things are not going your way. And they are telling you you will never make it. Let me tell you Sipiri secret. Worship. How yeah. When you are hungry. And you are thinking. 
What is it that I'm going to eat today? It's like there is no millimeter at all. You sit there in your house. It's like your style. And sit in your house. You close your door. Who are you, Jehovah? You are Jehovah. Jaira. The Lord, my provider. I know you keep on doing great things. 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 Why? Because you are Jehovah Jireh to me. And when you are worshipping him, oh, it won't be long. The fourth man must appear. The problem is, for us, the fourth man must be somebody who will bring Mili Mili in the house. Uh -uh. You will feel your stomach being full. Even though there is nothing inside. When you are seated there worshipping God. Telling him how beautiful he is. I said to you worship. Is to take God and put him where he's supposed to be. Where is he? Where is he? Vone, auna nonga, vone, e mutsimu wa rile. When you finish, one of the elders said, Daddy, there is somebody. He said, There is none other like you down there. And the father said, Let's listen. And you go, Ayo Yatswana, Riwena, Ayo Yatswana, Riwena, Ayo Yatswana, Riwena, Bodimoa, Runa. Did you hear that? It's like it's Mama Kananisa. Let's go. Daddy, let's go. Let's go and answer. Let's go and hear what he has to say. We have to answer. Because if we don't answer, this world will never know that you are God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now the problem is, we have forgot the secret. Worship. Build a chair of gold. Put him right there. Where he's supposed to stay. This is what I used to do. You know, when I feel down, I will get inside my car, open volume full blast, and I will start to worship. Wangi tatala, wangi begala, wangi susa, wangi bege. You care about me. I will know I will never fall. I will know I will never get down. I will know I will never be down. Why? You care for me. Now our problem is, we don't know who and how to worship. Hallelujah. Can you tell somebody that is close to you, you must worship. You must worship God. You must worship Him. You must please Him where He's supposed to. Can somebody say hallelujah? I want us to go forward. The Bible says, Acts chapter 24 verse 14, it's Paul, when he was before Felix, because they were saying things, that hey, he's telling people about another doctrine or about another God that we don't believe in. And Paul said, answering him, Hey, this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my father, believing all things which are written in the law, and in the prophets. Can I repeat it for you? Paul said, he was telling Felix, this issue 
I confess to you that according to the way which they call a sect, we are going to be a deal. And in so I worship the God of my father. Kitu mishamudimu wabo papaka. Believing all things which are written in the law. Kitu misha. Ka utu melati lotela ka ufela tedi umadule nbuke nyamulao. And in the prophets. This is the answer of what I've been saying. How do you worship? Go to the word of the Lord. You will find the things that God has done. God does not need to do them to you first so that you can be able to tell him about them. When God has done it to you, he has done it to me. If you stand there and, and, and testify and say I was jobless for 30 years like our brother said. And now I'm happy, I'm rejoicing. God has blessed me with a job. When I go to pray because I'm also jobless. I'm just giving an example by my brother. I then said to God, Father, I know you give people jobs. I know. Oh, you have taken my brother of 30 years and given him a job. I know you can do it. You have taken my sister, you were supposed to work in the office of CEO. Now he is working in the big office in the company. It means you can also do it for me now. God, I trust you. God, I believe you. And you worship him. And you put him, you tell him. Worshiping God is when I come to my brother like this. I say, hey, you look so handsome in pink. Hey, it's like you can wait every day because your color is enhanced. I'm just giving an example. You look so beautiful in pink. It's like you can wait every day. Even this hairstyle of yours sits well on you. Look at your shoes. You look so nice. Look at you. You are so handsome. Look how tall you are, God. Look how handsome. That's how to worship God. When you reach God, we are Mujela, you tell him, God, you are wonderful. Ah, you saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Ah, for me not to have a job is a small thing to you now. Ah, for me, healing is a small thing. If you have done it for those ones, you can do it for me. If you have taken the children of Israel from Egypt, ah, you can take me out of this situation. If you have been able to do it for that one, ah, it means you can do it also for me. And when you go on doing that, yeah, um, imoto ya start. Uh, he starts saying with the elders, I'm hearing something. I am hearing something. I'm hearing something on earth. There is noise that is coming from Charis. There is somebody yelling and crying and making noise. I need to go down right now. I need to go down right now. I have to rescue somebody right there, right now. I have to move right now. The Bible says, when you worship God in the beauty of his holiness, God comes down and come to your rescue. The secret yet, let me tell you, you have to worship him. Whether things are allowing you, whether things are going for you, whether things are not going to you, worship this God. Worship him. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you worship God? Do you worship God really serious? Let me tell you. If you start worshiping God, your life will never remain the same. If you start worshiping God, you will never stay in the same place for 10 years. If you can worship God truly and faithfully, you will never stay in one situation for many years. Because out of your mouth, 
There come sweet odor, smelling ways, going direct to the throne of the Lord God Almighty. When you want God to move, you must worship. When you want God to do something, children of God, let's worship. Can you tell the person that is close to you? We must worship. John chapter 4 verse 23 and 24 said, But the hour is coming and now it is. When true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. My Father is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit. Hey, and in truth. The time is coming and now the time is here. They are worshippers. Sorry. And they are true worshippers. It's not me, it's the Bible. Hmm? They are worshippers. And they are what? True worshippers. So then it means we must choose to be true worshippers. Because now when we worship him, he judges us, he looks at us, looks at us and see, are we worthy? What we are speaking, it is it from the heart? Or is it just the mouth talking? Hmm? Because many of us, when we worship, it's just the mouth going up and down. That which we are speaking is not from the heart. That which we are saying does not even do anything to us. This is what I believe in. When you come to me to minister a word, I believe that word might have started by you waking in you. When it has finished waking in you, then when you will come and relate it to me. And when you relate that word to me, I'm going to understand it more freely because it was waking in you. Now when you come to explain to me a word that is not working in you. Even when you say it, it does not have weight. Hmm? When you come to me and say, you must be born again. Yes, I will agree, I want to be born again. But this word that you are saying does not have weight. Does not have energy. Hmm? Now, when you are standing as a child of God, ministering or telling somebody, you must be born again. Because that word was working in your heart, in your life, inside of you. You are able to be born again. Why? Because the word has got weight. The word is so important. Hmm? That word has been seasoned, said the word of God. It has been seasoned by the spirit. When it goes off, it does not come back having not done the job. Now the Bible is saying to us, children of God, we must be true worshippers. When we worship, something must happen. When we worship, chains must be broken. When we worship, diseases must run away. When we worship, demons must complain. When we appear, demons must worry. Yo, yo, when we worship, devil must know that troublemaker has started. She's starting now to sing. And we know that if she can start worshipping, that which we have placed in her will never work again. That's the power of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, are you ready to worship? In Matthew chapter 15, 8 to 9, the Bible says, you can write it down, people draw near to me with their mouth. That's what I've been saying. And honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far away from me. And in vain, they worship me. 
Because they are teaching the doctrines of the commandments of men. Hallelujah. Matthew 15, 8 to 9. It said so. They worship with their mouth. You know, God uh, can take you from your, sh from your shack today and put you in a double story house. Mm. God, now, our God can heal you right now. Is our mouth speaking and our lips going up and down? This is what we always hear being said in our presence. But the words that are being spoken are not coming from deep down their hearts. Why? Because what they are teaching is not means the Bible. He said they are teaching the doctrines and the commandments of men. Those things are things that we people love to hear. Eh? Things that does not take us anywhere. I'm not saying all of everybody who's saying these things is wrong. Believe me. What I'm trying to say is, Banaba Papa, let us worship in spirit and in truth. When we say we are worshiping God, it must come from deep down. I will tell you why I'm saying this. You know what the Bible says? Paul and Silas, they were in jail, and in the midnight hour, they started praying and singing. And what I believe and what I say to myself, I said, these two men, they were not just singing songs. They were singing worshipping songs. And they were praying and telling God, how beautiful you are even though we are in jail. How wonderful you are even though we are bound to head, legs, and our heads. How beautiful you are, oh God, even though we are sitting in this concrete floor you are still wonderful and beautiful and the bible says when they were singing when they were singing singing for the lord praying the bible says and the prisoners were listening let me tell you when you worship, sinners must listen. When you praise your God, evil doers must listen. When you praise your Father, those who are not born again, they must listen to you. Why? Because what you are doing shakes the supernatural, breaks the supernatural, breaks the yoke of the devil. What you are doing right there, you are shaking the foundation of evil when you worship so the bible says as they were worshiping i tried to think maybe what is it they were saying they were saying i said almighty god the great i am hallelujah hallelujah we serve a mighty god even though the way chains the great i am hallelujah Hallelujah. Hey. And the heavens say, mm, mm, mm. I, there is something that's happening down there. Where is Paul? Where is Silas? And the elders say, they are in prison. You know? They've been jailed. And God said, ah, uh ah. -uh. They have to go out this minute. And heaven came down. When heaven came down, the Bible says the doors opened. I don't know if you're understanding me. When heaven came down, AIDS is nothing. When heaven comes down, sugar, nothing. Sugar goes to like us at E. Eh? When heavens come down, I blood rico wood as a silo. When heavens come, yeah, you saw something must happen. Hallelujah. 
I believe today we are going to call heaven to come down to Charis Missionary Church and when we worship him we'll worship in truth and in spirit and when we call him he will come down and when he come down there is no disease that is going to be left when he come down there is no situation that is going to be left when he come down there is no trouble that won't be troubled when he come down the bible said they worshiped oh okay give a word it's like i'm seeing the you know sitting in prison hey I wish I can do that. See him please. Bound. Your your hands are bound. Your feet are down. But you are singing. Ngu aiko hengenzeki guwe. Ebo ngu aiko. Eh, you are somebody that there is nothing impossible unto him. I know my God if you can appear him even the evil doers are going to know that you are the God of heaven and earth if people those that don't know that you are a God that is alive they are going to start knowing that you are God the bible said in the book of acts oh yeah kalabasit in the book of acts 16 if you can go and read there Verse twenty-five down there, he said, "The man who was taking care of the prison, get some more hotel, come on." Hey, the Bible said, "Running, running." Nah, nah, man. You know that you have left your house being closed and locked, ah? Huh? And you hear. Or oh, hey, pela the doors are opened. Your house is open. The first thing that you will try to do is to go and see what's going on. Now this man, even in his heart, he was having a guilty conscience why? Because this man were placed under his authority. And then when he ran to prison, when he reached there he found every door wide open ha. Huh? open and the bible says he took a shot because he knew it's over over with me when they hear that this man has fled away it is over with me the bible says when he was about to stab himself or to kill himself these two men who knows how to worship god how to put god where he's supposed to be the god of israel the god of abraham and isaac the god who doesn't fail the god who's always there even during the midnight when you call him he answers this god they said to me oh no don't harm yourself all of us we are here count us julia shu joyce yasu andrisi su tendo shu maluodi shu lucia su chiriziko yu Mang mangasu, refuge. Nobody ran away. The Bible said they bowed down. Said, "Man of God, what is it that I can do so that I become saved?" Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Now let me tell you, children of God, it is out of our worship that this South Africa will know that they are children of God. born and bred by the word of god washed clean by the blood of jesus citizens of heaven they will know that there is a god who is alive as long as we take god and put him where he's supposed to be the problem is we take this god and we make him like a dingwe we we'll mix him with some things that is why i said if somebody here can say can come right now and say how many people want to have 10000 in their account right now you will see ke bo tshe a wa ke no bo tshe fela want to ask how many people want to have a million in their account i'm not saying it's wrong are you understanding me but in the right way not in the wrong way if the spirit of god is saying so that's good but i mean in the wrong way 
You will see some of us running go even re nabo mamuruti riki team running there because we want what money. But does that money worship or brings worship unto God Almighty? Now, when this man ask Paul and Silas, man, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe. Eh? Do what? Believe. All things are possible. This is what we have done during the night. We were just praying. We were just singing. Ah, we didn't make any trouble with anybody. You can ask these others, they will tell you. The only thing we we're doing, we were worshipping. We were praising our God. We were telling him how wonderful he is. Though we are in chains, we still believe he is God. Though we don't have food, we believe he is God. Though I'm jobless, I believe he is God. Though I'm not married, I believe he is still God. Though I don't have a house, I believe he is God. Though I don't have a car, I still believe he is God. Though I'm not anointed as a woman, I still believe he is God. And he said, I better take this God. So now, how many times or how many people are there in our lives that their lives are being changed because we are worshipping? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the reverse of worship. The reserve of worship is insult. Can you tell the person that is close to you, insult? Huh? Insult. This is what we do. When things are not going our way, when things are bad, why it's it's so long I've been in the house of God. And then there are these people, you know. They are always being blessed and we are not getting blessed. I don't know if this God is seeing us. You are insulting God. Who said God is not seeing you? When you don't worship God, you insult God. You will tell the opposite of what you are supposed to tell God. Nagimo, I'm here. Because I want God to bless me with a job. And now, God is in your heart. He doesn't bless you with a job because you know you will die. Die of sin, not the death, death of dying. You will die in sin if he blesses you with a job. Now he's standing a while and wait for you to be complete in him. So that he can give you that job that you are searching for. Now when you are still waiting because you don't know how to worship God. You start insulting God. Can you ask people that are close to you. How many times have you insulted God? And tell him answer me. Huh? Paolo urile mo la hu. Oh, X24. Alisa Kopola. Uri asitaba ya uri kibo onini. It's not an issue of that I've seen. Ki ya ka uri kamo Bible ingi wangu adile uri ingi. Eh? So it's not an issue that you must be blessed first. And then you will go and tell God that you are my blesser. You look at others that has been blessed before. Then you come to God and say to God, you are a blesser. You go there to the Bible and say and see somebody saying, the God that I serve has come like Daniel when he was saying it in Daniel 3. The God that I've served when I come King Dario, the God that I serve, came down to me in the lion's den and he tied the mouth of the lion. That is why even now I'm still alive. These lions, they no longer see me as a lion. They see me as a lion also. A lion maybe of Judah. Are you hearing me? When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, this is what I perceive. I said it means the minute he went down, when he landed, a lion landed. When he landed inside the lion's den, a lion of Judah landed inside the lion's den. And when the lion started looking at the lion of Judah, 
or they saw it was a lion now. What is it that they can do to a lion? They have to be friends with the lion. This is where I'm heading. Mama, Papa, Sesibuti. Your situation needs you to worship God. Your situation wants you to know the God that you are serving. Your situation needs you to understand the type of God you are worshipping. Your situation needs you to go down and sit down. You say, um, I'm sick. Mm, yes, I understand I'm sick. Let me go to the Bible and search for such people that were sick in the Bible. And you go there and read and read and read and search and search. You'll find others that were sick. You'll find others that were without children for many, many years. And so, ah, uh, uh, if there was more, and no one is not having children. Who is me that I cannot have children? If God was able to bless them and they bless them, God blesses them with people, prophets. Prophet Samuel. Uh, uh, it means that God can also bless me with prophet. Elisa. It does not need you to see first. Our problem is. Christianity does not want you to see first. You go to those that wish these things have happened to them. And when you tell God about them, something must happen to you. In other words, you are acknowledging. You are saying to God Almighty, I have seen you. We have seen this song. I love this song. Come on, Jesus. Until the Lord was fell, whatever the reggae cherry tala lechono. Even though today I'm hungry, but my God is always doing wonderful things to me. Look at me right now. I always tell my children, say, Look at me, girls. I'm so beautiful, wonderful, and fearfully made by God Himself. Even though you say I'm ugly, it doesn't matter. But what I know is I was created in the image of God himself I was made in the image of God himself no matter what people can say no matter what people can talk about but what I'm telling you is I have been created I have been formed in the likeness of God almighty now if you can know I'm telling you South Africa will never remain the same hallelujah Hallelujah. Can you tell somebody close to you know, if you can know that, your house will never remain the same. If you can know that, your job will never remain the same. If you can know that, your situation you can never remain the same. Hallelujah. Let us read the last verse. I want us to hear this one. Revelation. Kudul. You can go and read Revelation 4, verse 10 and 11. And Revelation 11, 16 and 17, they talk about the same thing. They said, 24 elders fall before him. Who sits on the throne and worship him? Who lives forever and ever? And cast their throne, throne before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord. To receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. And by your will they exist and were created. And Acts 16, 25. No, Revelation eleven sixteen and 17 said. Elders who sat before God on their throne fell. On their faces and worshipped God saying. We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty. The one who was and who is and who is to come. Because you have taken your greater power and your reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. How can you worship? How do you worship? I have already said to you. You go to the men, the prophets of old. You go to the word of God and you read. And as you are reading, you'll find your, your own word. Remember, we are different here, isn't it? Now, we are here. We've got different needs. Hmm? The things that we are crying for. Now, when you come to church someday, you find the Apostle as Eunice. I'm elevating myself. Talking about uh, 
You are more than the conqueror. We are talking about it last week, isn't it? And he just speaks and speaks and speaks. And you grab, grab a certain word there. Hmm? You grab that which works for you. Let's see what about you. You grab it. And when you grab it, you put it inside the pocket. When you reach home, you take it out. You sit down. And you start reading. And when you read, the Bible said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord your healer. And you say, Father, thank you for healing me. I know you are the Lord my healer. You grab that word. And it said, Hannah was barren for all these years. Penina was having a lot of children who amounts to nothing. Hmm? And when you listen, you grab it. You put it in your pocket. When you reach home, you take it out. You sit down. And I read it. Eh? You sit down. You, you read. Said, and then and then she went before the Lord. The Bible says she was crying. And Eli the prophet came and said, Woman, are you drunk? Why are you speaking like one who was God, who's full of wine? And she answered, I said, My Lord, I'm just pouring out my griefs to the Lord so that the Lord can come to my rescue. And the prophet said to him, Let it be according to what you're crying for. What we hear in the Bible is Hannah went home. He knew her husband and she conceived why she grabbed the word that was spoken by the prophet that day. Now when you are in the house of the Lord, when the word of the Lord is being preached, you grab that word that works for you. You put it inside your pocket. You go home with that word. When you reach your home with that word, you unfold it before you. You start to think about it. You start to meditate about it. It starts working in your life. It starts doing miracles in your own life. It starts talking to your own soul. Now when that word speaks with you, a miracle is bound to happen. Can somebody say hallelujah? Now the Bible says, 24 elders, we are learning. When they reach the throne of God, they bow. They take off their throne. They put them down. And they worship. And they say, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy of all the glory and honor and power. You created all heaven and all earth. Everything that is in earth belongs to you. And now when me and you, when we go before God, we kneel down, we take our pride, we put it down. When we take our pride, we put it down. We say, Father, wonderful art thou. You are awesome and faithful. What a magnificent God you are. What a mighty God you are. Father, when you say walk, I walk. When you say stand, I stand. When you say nothing is impossible with you. Father, I've seen it, it has happened in many of us. And I believe it's going to happen to me also. Father, I pray I stay before you. I'm not going to leave your feet today. Because Father, I believe you are going to do it also for me. I have heard others talking about your goodness. I have heard others speaking about your wonderfulness. I have heard about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I have heard about Daniel. I have heard about the children of Israel. I have heard that you fed them in the wilderness. I have heard that you walked with them. I have heard that you opened a way in the sea. Father, I have heard and I know. And Father, I know that you will do it right now. In Charis missionary church. Oh God almighty, if you have done it for Hannah, you can do it today for somebody. Oh God almighty, if you did it for Daniel in the lion's den, you can shut up the mouth of those lions
problems in their workplaces because you did it for Daniel. Oh God Almighty, if you did it for Silas and Paul in prison, heavenly Father, the prisoner of these demons that are attacking us can be broken loose today. I believe we are going to walk out free. Why? Because we are worshipping. Why? Because we are walking with you. Why? Because we have you as our God. If God, you can do it for us. We will never stop worshipping you. For God, we know that you can open prison doors. For God, you know, we know that you can feed the hungry. For God, we know that you can stop badness in the lives of people. For God, we know that you are Jehovah Jireh. You can give people what they need. For God, we know that you are Jehovah Shalom. Where there is no peace, you can put peace. For God, we know you are El Roy. You are the Lord that sees me. For God, I know that you said in the ancient country that I put my feet on. I'm going to take over. God, I know. I know, I know, I know. I know that you are God. I know you can do it for me. God, if you have blessed and anointed Elisha and gave him a double portion when he sees your servants going, I believe, oh, Father, you can do it also for me because when I see your servants going, you are going to give me double portion. I don't know if you know and believe what I'm talking about. We have to start worshipping. My children, let's start worshipping. Let's worship the God of glory. Let's worship the King of glory. Let's clap our hands for him. Let's tell me how wonderful. Can you worship? Can you worship? Clap your hands and worship. Clap your hands and worship. Clap your hands and worship. It's time to worship. Doors have to be opened today. It's time to worship. All doors must be opened. Today in the name of Jesus.